you got to gloss this part over. But when you talk about moving knives and drugs and balloons, this is known as boofing. Right. Which means you put it up your anus. I never boofed a knife. And by the way, when we're talking knives, these are not like bone crushers like they have in the feds. They're fucking whittled down toothbrushes. They're razors, you know, cut off and fastened around the end of a pencil or whatever. Regardless of what that is, <laughs> you don't want to stick that up your butt. Okay, I, I don't care I, how I, small of a, let of me a tell, knife that is, you don't want to put it up your butt, okay? like Maybe you do. Yeah, I don't know. No, so I never I never boofed a, a knife or anything like that. But yeah, okay. I boofed a fucking balloon. Okay. Sure. I mean, the first time you did that, was there like a thought of like, I grew up in a nice two family, you know, two person, middle class family. And now I'm sticking a balloon filled with drugs up my, up my butt. Yeah. Like, yeah. I am now on a different planet. It did. Yeah. For sure. I'm like, this is wild but you know it's you're in survival mode so you're like oh just be cool like nothing's happening like he would so he was celled up a lot meaning he didn't even he wasn't even allowed to leave his cell so that's why he'd be like hey just take this down to the house as you're coming out to yard you know slip me the fucking razor you know drop this off at you know whatever 3c right shit like that but the balloons when they would come into the prison I think he had a guard in the kitchen where I was working. I got a job, which is a terrible idea. You should never get a job in prison. You should don't give them your labor, right? For basically free. But I was working in the kitchen. And so he'd be like, hey, because I wasn't gangbang and I wasn't affiliated. I was like the the square. I was the fish out of water guy the whole time. Where people were like, What are you doing in here, young man? <laughs> I'm like, it's a great question. So uh so it would be like a, yeah, you'd, you'd get this little balloon. It was either crystal or weed. There wasn't a lot of heroin in there. I don't think anybody has Coke in prison because it doesn't mm. last long enough. I, I don't know, but I didn't see any. It was just crystal and some weed. So yeah, you're fucking, you're shoving that balloon with the little, the tiny little whatever opening up. It's like a tampon, right? That's how you pull it out. And so I looked at it as I'm walking back from the kitchen from my at the end of my shift to the cell block, I'm like, pretended I was on the highway with a bunch of weed. You don't even think, consider there's even a chance that you could get caught. And you put yourself in that state of mind. So it really wasn't until after, until I, I got classed down to like minimum, where I was like, wow, what a fucking asshole. <laughs> what an asshole I was. What a piece of shit. So it doesn't really hit you at the time until later, uh. you know. Um, but Jimmy, you know, I did that for him a couple of times and I would do favors like, you know, moving the fucking, moving the burners around, we called them. But um, he eventually, as he got to know me, he was like, oh, we really built this bond. And he was like, I want you to get out. And I told him I wanted to, I wanted to go to Hollywood. I was writing screenplays at night by candlelight and all this fucking weird shit. And, and, uh, he was like, okay, I, I don't think you can, you gotta be clean from now on. We gotta get you out of here. And so, uh, you know, it ended up being like a real, like kind of special relationship. And, and, uh, and he was the reason I, I didn't have any more problems. Like he told, he was like, I was kind of untouchable. You know, he told the white guys, like, you don't harm a, a hair on his head. I mean, were you seeing any, any rapes? In prison? Mm -mm. No. That's pretty much a myth. I mean, I know there are... No, it's... It's not a myth. It's not a myth, <laughs> but it's... Depends where you go. It's... You're right. I mean, there was some gay shit going on in there for sure. I mean, okay. I think 99% of the, uh, you know, we'll call it whatever, the butt fucking. You can delete that. That's fine. Most of the butt fucking is consensual. Okay. I'm not saying it's not... Prison rape isn't a thing, but it's... it's um, most of the gay shit is consensual. Anybody will tell you that. So there was a lot of gay inmates? No, it's straight inmates who are doing decades who are either turning out a gay inmate or or they're just on the low, you know? Yeah, I mean, the whole turning out thing. I remember I interviewed uh, Terrence Gangster Williams who did well, 25 years or something. Mm. And he would talk about what he would see, like the older guys trying to turn out the younger guys. Mm. They would say things like, 
your hand can't be gay. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> there was this there was this saying uh the saying in where I was at six months to the gay if you quit doing gay shit six months before you get out not technically gay <laughs> that is the how, funniest how thing I've ever that? heard it was the funniest shit as I long as you stop being gay for six months you're technically not gay according to this rule book okay God's looking down like oh no he's good okay he's so gonna be gay for five years but as long as that's last six months exactly that was that was the saying in there Okay. Then they would yell, disengage. That's if a guard's caught you fucking, they would yell, disengage. So that was like the joke. If you heard that coming from the broom closet in the kitchen, that means there was some hanky-panky going on there.